Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jean Nu and I talk about all things mindful and sustainable living. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a get ready with me. I'm going to be talking about my time in New York City filming on the Drew Barrymore show. I'm going to tell you about the process, how they found me, and I'm going to show you sort of behind the scenes of it as well. So let's hop into the video. All right, so I'm going to attempt to do my makeup while also telling the story. Um, so two, three weeks ago, I had a producer follow me on Instagram and sometimes I like to look to see like who follows me because I'm just curious because uh, you never know and I saw that she was one of the producers on the Drew Barrymore show and I was like oh my goodness this is crazy um, but then I just kind of left it I was like I'm not gonna reach out I'll just like sort of wait it out and then about um, a week later, I got an email and she was reaching out and was like, hey, would love to see if you're interested in potentially being on the Drew Barrymore show and like doing a segment for Earth Day. And of course I was like, absolutely, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I would drop everything. So it would be filming in New York. And so, it was a week before I ended up going out. Um, so very quick turnaround, very Hollywood. That's how things work. And basically I was going to do a segment with Drew that was like three tips to electrifying. It was like in partnership with LG um, cause they do like partnerships on the show. And I didn't get the script till like two days before and then they also updated the script like the day before which again that's Hollywood and you know that is a part of the process of being a creative what I will say is like coming from an acting background really helped I know a lot of creators who don't necessarily have an acting background when it comes to like quick changes like that like they're very frazzled but I think I've learned how to sort of adapt to all of it and what else and then okay she emailed me and then she was like okay i need to get the sign off from the executive producer or executive producers i don't know if it's multiple executives but it was some of the executive producers and she emailed me back i think the next day and was like the executive producer signed off on you which what's crazy about it is i've actually seen a few tweets of people that are um that were like guests on the show, not like the celebrities, but like experts, like a, there was this travel expert, I think, and she posted on threads I saw, and it was like, oh, I had to do a interview in order to be on the show. I didn't have to do a single interview or a single phone call, which is crazy. One of my affirmations is opportunities flow to me freely and easily. I think I've worked so hard and I'm like, not everything has to be hard to get. Like, I think things should also come easy to you as well but it was just really reassuring that i'm on the right path and that i know what i'm doing and that i'm doing a good job with building my brand they signed off on me without even meeting me is like or a video call or having any sort of call with me is pretty crazy and this is why i tell a lot of people who are creators like you need to get on youtube like i don't have that big of a following on youtube and my views aren't the best but youtube is a resume so like the, the producer found me on Instagram, but when she was talking about like different like tips that I could potentially do, she like linked one of my YouTube videos and it was like one of my like well-produced YouTube videos. And I mean, I think it had like a thousand views on it, but it just goes to show you that it's less about getting, you know, all these followers as our subscribers. Sometimes it's really just about putting out good work and the right people see it and it just leads to really great opportunities. But I've also had other opportunities too that have come from my YouTube channel. Like I did an interview with like Sophia Bush through Well and Good and they paid me and it was like three hours of my time and I got paid a few thousand dollars to do that. So it definitely can open up a lot of doors by being on YouTube and just getting started. And even if you don't know what you're doing, just start because you never know where it can take you. You never know who's going to see it. It's so reassuring to know that I am on the right path and that I know what I'm doing. I know how to brand myself. I know what I'm good at. I know I'm good at talking to camera. 
sometimes I struggle, you know, we're not perfect, but in terms of like, in a, you know, in a setting where you're delivering lines and things like that, I think I'm pretty good at it. And I've also had opportunities with Vox Media and I did two things with them. One, it was in LA and one, they flew me out to New York and it was one of their explainer videos and it was great. Like I was speaking to a teleprompter, there's a room of maybe like 15 people and I was just like doing a really great job and killing it. So I am just really proud of myself. Um, but anyway, the way that it worked is I got to set or before I got to set, I actually had someone do my hair and makeup. They had someone there that could like touch up hair and makeup, but like I didn't want to risk it because also, so like I don't really trust white makeup artists. <laughs> There's just so many bad experiences I've had. So I was like, why don't I just hire someone that I know? So I hired someone that I've worked with in the past when I'm in New York. So I hired her to do my hair and makeup. I was definitely looking cute. I had this nice little coral suit. I want it to be professional, but then also fun. So we did hair and makeup. I got to the studio. I had a friend of mine who came with me, who also lives in New York. Basically the producer came in and was like, okay, this is sort of the rundown and reassured me that like, if I needed to read from the teleprompter, that was fine, which was a really, which was a big relief because speaking to camera and like having the three tips was fine, but because it was in partnership with LG, there were certain lines that had to say, there were certain lines that had to say word for word in order to meet whatever requirements. So I was like nervous about getting them done because there's like also bigger words, not bigger words, but like not easy words in there. It was like electrification, electromagnetic, something, something. So I just didn't want to mess that up, but I wasn't really nervous about being in front of people. It doesn't really scare me. Um, and Drew was so sweet. She was really nice gave me a big hug and was like, I'm so happy you're here. She's like, you're so beautiful and I love your outfit, but she was really sweet. And basically I had two rehearsals before I did the live show. The first rehearsal was basically just figuring out if I wanted to use the teleprompter or not versus like maybe cards. And then the second rehearsal was basically using, um, it was me fully dressed, basically a backup if I mess up uh, during the live taping. So when they're editing on the show, because what they're filming, they then go and edit because it's not a live show. Speaking to the camera with the teleprompter and my voiceover. So if, let's say I did mess up on something, they could use that voiceover and like put B-roll over it. And they also are just getting like extra shots of me of a just, just in case. So that was pretty good. And what was also really a good feeling was the producer came back and was like, you usually film someone when they are saying the words to camera from a teleprompter, it takes about 20-ish minutes, but it only took you 10. She's like, you did a really good job. Everyone was happy. And also like people from the LG team were there too, and they were very happy. So just all in all, like everyone was happy with me. Everyone said I did a really good job. And I was just really grateful that I delivered and that I did, um, I made people happy because you want the potential to like either come back or like have the right person see it and have it open other doors. The producer did also say um, to like pitch her or send her pitches of like other ideas I might have. It would be amazing if I could go back. One of the things I've been manifesting as well and I've been saying, anyone that knows me, I've been saying TV, 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 like I want to be on TV like that. We, we, we want to be on TV. We we just we just do i think i've always wanted to be on tv i know that that is just where i am meant to be so it's really great that i'm just speaking these things into existence and they are happening and i am just very very grateful for that but overall the process was really great i got to meet drew barrymore and she was so sweet and this will be launching on earth day i think this video is going to come out after Earth Day. Yeah, it's gonna come out probably after the video comes out or the show comes out, but um, it was just a really great experience and I'm just so grateful. But if you don't know me, um, I tried to be an actor when I first moved to LA. I went to school out here and it wasn't really working <laughs> because in LA it's like you either have to have connections or money money in the sense of like you have to have the time to even go on auditions because if you are trying to be an actor auditions are like at 2 p.m right so you can't just necessarily stop the work day to go and to go and um 
go on an audition. And I would work like evenings at a restaurant as a hostess. I just wanted to be an actor, which I think I still want to be in that world to an extent. Like I want to be on TV, maybe more so as myself. But I think I would love to do like a comedy, like a comedy show I think would fit really well for me. I have a very like dry sense of humor and I would just love to do comedy. I don't think I'm trying to do some like crazy drama where like I'm crying and like do like a euphoria type show where it's just like craziness going on. But I would love to do just like something fun, maybe a rom-com or something. But doing acting is not out of the picture at all. I, I I went full time as a creator. It's been three and a half years now, which is crazy to think about. And each year I've made six figures and I've made a little bit more every year. And I've just been having so many great opportunities come my way and all the things that I keep saying that I want, at least in my career, <laughs> maybe not other places in life, but at least in my career have been coming to pass. And like, for example, this year I said that I wanted to save money instead of like traveling so much because last year, if you haven't been following me, follow my Instagram because I do travel a lot, but I was traveling for a bit and traveling can be expensive for sure, especially if you're traveling around and you're not just in one place. But I was like, okay, this year I'm going to stay home and I'm not going to travel as much more so because of the money less because I don't want to travel. But already I have like so many free travel opportunities coming up. I obviously just went to New York to film the Drew Barrymore show. And I'm also going to Miami and, and doing a partnership with hotels.com, which is paid, which is great. So I'm getting to travel and getting paid, which is really hard. Like a lot of people that are in the travel space, it's hard, especially like more Instagram, it's hard for them to really make money because a lot of hotels don't pay, they just do trades but because this is more of like a website situation it will work out because i worked with them over the summer last summer and i went to tulum and i was focusing on an eco hotel and so they wanted me to do another one they liked the work that i did and they wanted me to do another one so again it's like it's really about putting in the work and just doing the best that you can possibly do like i pride myself on high quality content I think there's a lot of people that grow very quickly on social media by posting nonstop and maybe that works for them and they grow very quickly, but that doesn't always translate to money and opportunities. Like there's people who have follow, like double, triple the following of me, specifically Instagram, because that's where I make my money. And they're not making as much as I am. I mean, these are people that I'm friends with and know and maybe they're growing quickly on Instagram, but that doesn't necessarily translate to being on TV. I mean, it depends on what your goal is, right? But i much rather be at, what, 40,000 followers on Instagram, getting TV opportunities, getting paid travel and all these amazing things versus having 100,000 followers and like not getting those things. So followers for me, yeah, it's important because I want to grow and you want to make more money, but also, you have to think of the bigger picture and what your bigger goal is. My goal is to be on TV and basically be Oprah and like have my hands in a million different things, produce, be on TV, have my own lines of different things. So you just have to think strategically and play things for the long haul. Like YouTube like is very hard to grow, um, especially when you're doing long form because I feel like everything's short form now, but I'm just trusting the process and I'm documenting my life and my journey because I hope that inspires someone. Even if this video gets 300 views, like at least it's 300 people that viewed it and hopefully got inspired. So things are just looking really good in life. And you know, I hope that if you are going through a rough patch or if you have a dream to be a creator or whatever it might be, that this is a sign that it is possible and I am proof of that. Like you can definitely have a dream and it can come to pass. I think surrounding yourself with the right people, people that are in alignment with where you're trying to go and that can support you is really important because it's hard to go after your dreams alone. I mean, it definitely, definitely takes a lot of discipline to build your own business because no one is making you do it, which can be good to have an accountability partner, but it's really important to stay disciplined, stay focused, 
and you're you may not get results right away that's just like not how things work just like if you think about when you go to the gym you're not gonna lose weight overnight like it takes time but over time you'll get better and faster and you're, you'll learn more and it's just going to lead to more opportunities and that's how I sort of view um, what I'm doing just now like sometimes I like don't know what I'm doing I don't know if a video is going to do well but what I do know is a, it's not gonna hurt me <laughs> by trying something new. And B, you never know who's gonna see it. You never know what door is gonna be opened. You never know what TV producer might see what, what you're putting out into the world. So it's just important to go after what you want, try new things, don't be afraid to look silly or look stupid because at least you're trying. Like never fault someone for trying because anyone that's making fun of you is someone that's probably not going after the things that they want because they're scared. So daily reminder, Go after what you want. Anything is possible. I hope you found this video helpful, a little entertaining. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.